Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yak Science here with another biology video. And today, my goal is to get you to really appreciate your pee. And I say that because today we're going to be talking about the nephron. Now the nephron can be understood as the basic subunit of the kidney. You have about a million nephrons per kidney. And the main function of the nephron, or at least one of its functions, is to filter out your blood, or filter out the stuff that we don't want in our blood and release it as urine, as pee, okay? And as we're going to see soon, this is not exactly a simple process. Uh, the journey of P, which is really what this is, this is the journey of P, will involve uh, a really intricate dance uh, between secretion and reabsorption and filtration. Essentially, our goal is to end up keeping the stuff we want to keep in our blood and getting rid of the stuff that we want to get rid of, like toxins. Okay, so it's really important that the nephron can do its job right. Uh, maintaining the osmolarity or the concentration of solutes in our blood. Okay, so we're going to start our journey of pee over here at the afferent arteriole. Now, what is the afferent arteriole? The afferent arteriole is essentially a branch off of the renal artery, and what it's going to do is it's going to enter and become this structure that we call the glomerulus. So the afferent arteriole at the glomerulus is going to do a lot of coiling and twisting and then eventually leave the glomerulus as an efferent arteriole. Okay, we're going to get into these two towards the end of the video. But uh, this really super coiled, twisted structure of uh, blood vessels is called the glomerulus. Now surrounding the glomerulus is Bowman's capsule. And what's going to happen at uh, this portion of the nephron is what we call filtration. Essentially, the blood is going to unload a ton of fluid uh, out of the bloodstream into Bowman's capsule. So what types of things are filtered? Let's list them out. Okay, so at the glomerulus, we're going to be filtering out things like water, uh, ions like sodium chloride and potassium, bicarbonate, glucose, amino acids, creatinine and urea. By the way, creatinine and urea are basically waste products that we definitely want to get out. But you might be asking yourselves, do we really want to pee away glucose and amino acids and bicarbonate and these essential ions? Of course not, right? These, these are really, really important um, solutes. Uh, glucose, right? Your brain needs glucose. Your cells need glucose. Amino acids uh, and bicarbonate, especially to maintain our blood pH. We don't want to pee these away. And so um, we're going to want to get those back or at least some of it back into the bloodstream. And that's what's going to come next. So now that we've filtered out a ton of fluids into uh, Bowman's capsule, right, at the glomerulus, the next step comes at this structure right here, which we call the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, the proximal convoluted tubule will involve two phases. One phase will involve reabsorption of the stuff that we really want to keep. And a second phase at the proximal convoluted tubule will involve secretion. And secretion is it's when we're actually going to put stuff into uh, the nephron. Okay. So what types of things are reabsorbed, right? What types of things go from the nephron back into the bloodstream? Let's list them out, okay? So at the proximal convoluted tubule, we are gonna reabsorb uh, water, ions like uh, NaCl, sodium, and bicarbonate. And of course, we're gonna wanna reabsorb glucose and amino acids. And so in terms of percentages, we reabsorb about 65% of the water at the proximal convoluted tubule, about 65% of the NaCl and K plus, about 90% of the bicarbonate, which makes sense because we need bicarbonate to maintain blood pH. Um, and also makes sense, 100% of glucose and 100% of amino acids are reabsorbed at the proximal convoluted tubule because we do not want to pee those out. Those are essential nutrients. Uh, and now a second thing that happens at the proximal convoluted tubule is secretion. So what types of things are secreted? Okay, so uric acid and organic acids, including like antibiotics and stuff that we want to secrete, um, will be secreted at the proximal convoluted tubule. And remember, don't confuse reabsorption, secretion, and filtration. Those are three different things. Secretion involves going from the bloodstream or interstitium back into uh, the nephron. So you can almost think of it as the opposite of reabsorption, right? So we're putting uric acid and, and other organic acids back into uh, the nephron at the proximal convoluted tubule, okay? So these are the two main things that happen at the proximal convoluted tubule. Let's now move on to the next part of the nephron, which is this guy right here, this huge loop, which we call the loop of Henle. Let's label that real quick. Okay, so this is the loop of Henle, and it consists of two limbs, which we call the descending limb and the ascending limb. Descending limb because it goes down into the kidney, deep into the kidney, 
and the ascending limb because it goes in the opposite direction, it goes back up, okay? Um, now what happens along the descending limb? Well, you're going, uh, the descending limb, we should note, is permeable to water but not to ion. So what's going to happen is we're going to lose water, right? We're going to reabsorb water, a lot of water along the, the descending limb. So let's draw that. Okay, so along the, the descending limb of the loop of Henle, we're going to be reabsorbing a lot of water because it's permeable to water but not to ions. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen to the concentration of the filtrate along the descending limb? Well, if we're losing water but not other salt, but not solutes like sodium or potassium, the concentration is going to increase more and more and more and more as you go along the descending limb. So by the time you're at the, the end of the uh, descending limb of the loop of Henle, you're gonna have really, really concentrated filtrate, okay? So now what's gonna happen along the ascending limb is kind of the opposite of what happened along the descending limb. Along the ascending limb, it's not gonna be permeable to water, but we are going to reabsorb a lot of ions. And specifically, we're gonna be reabsorbing uh, ions like sodium and chloride, or sodium chloride, and uh, potassium. So let's draw that out real quick. Okay, so we're going to be reabsorbing ions, but not water. And so that should have the opposite effect on the concentration of the filtrate, right? Down the descending limb of, of the loop of Henle, we saw the concentration of the filtrate increase as water left. Now along the ascending limb, we're going to see the concentration decrease, uh, the concentration of the filtrate decrease as solutes leave. And one really important thing happens here. Notice that we're putting a ton of these um, solutes into um, the interstitium or the outside of the nephron. And what that does is it makes the interstitium very, very salty. So we could divide, I should have done this earlier, but we could divide the nephron really into two halves or the kidney into two halves. The lower half being the uh, renal medulla and the upper part being the renal cortex. And this part of the loop of Henle, uh, the descending limb and the first half of the ascending limb more or less, um, reach into the medulla where it's very salty. And the really important point to note about this ascending limb is the fact that these solutes are being actively pumped out of the nephron and reabsorbed creates a salty environment so that back here at the descending limb, you could passive, passively reabsorb water. And we call that process countercurrent multiplication. Let's write that out. Okay, countercurrent multiplication. So just to review that one more time, we are, pa we are actively pumping out um, solutes like NaCl and potassium and reabsorbing them at the ascending limb, creating a very salty medulla so that back at the descending limb, we could passively reabsorb water because of the concentration gradient created, okay? And next in line comes the distal convoluted tubule. Remember, this was the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the distal convoluted tubule. So what happens here? What happens here at the distal convoluted tubule is we're going to be reabsorbing a little bit more sodium uh, chloride and a little bit more water. So let's draw that out. Okay, so once again, at the distal convoluted tubule, we're going to be reabsorbing uh, water and NaCl. And you can almost think of it as kind of put it, putting some of the finishing touches on the filtrate. And another thing that happens at the distal convoluted tubule, there is a secretion step, right? Just like at the proximal convoluted tubule, there was reabsorption and secretion. So too at the distal convoluted tubule is the reabsorption and secretion. This time there will be secretion of hydrogen ions and potassium ions, okay? So that's what's secreted here, okay? And last but not least, we're going to talk about the collecting duct or the collecting tubule, which is this long structure right here. Now what's gonna happen at the collecting duct, we're gonna reabsorb urea, water, and sodium chloride. So let's draw that out, okay? So once again, reabsorption of urea, water, and NaCl. Now you may have noticed that I drew in these little pockets, these, these sort of outgrowths of the collecting duct. And I drew those because they actually represent connections to multiple distal convoluted tubules of surrounding nephrons. So a single collecting duct could actually um, connect to multiple nephrons at these junctions right here that I drew. And finally, we come to the last step, which is excretion, right? We finally filtered out everything we need uh, and we have our urine. So what are the contents of urine? Let's draw those out. So your urine will include water, sodium chloride, potassium, uh, creatinine, bicarbonate ion, and urea. Okay, so that is the really long and complicated journey of P. We started at the afferent, excuse me, arterial. We went through the nephron, all these structures. 
going through reabsorption stages and secretion stages and filtration in the beginning. Now, last but not least, I want to end with talking about this guy, the efferent arterial, because it has a really important job. Notice that we were doing all this reabsorption. So what's going to pick up all of these uh, solutes and water that was, re that was um, pushed out of the nephron? That'll be the efferent arterial. It'll literally wind around the nephron and pick up all of these substances to be reabsorbed. Okay, so that is the nephron. I really hope that wasn't too bad, and thanks so much for watching.